Welcome to The Power of Faith with David Hathaway. This Christmas, our prayer is that God would bless you and your family. That you will experience divine health, provision, and joy. Receive this blessing from the book of Isaiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. In the Old Testament, King Solomon prayed. Will God really dwell on earth with men? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. The miracle of Christmas is that God came and dwelt with us on earth. And he continues to be with us through the person of the Holy Spirit. The heavens and the earth cannot contain him, yet he chooses to be with us. Before David ministers, we want to thank you for your generous support in prayer and finance. Because of you, evangelism has been held in Poland and Georgia. And vital humanitarian and spiritual aid has been supplied to the displaced and vulnerable in Ukraine. Visit our website, eurovision.org.uk, to see the effectiveness of your giving. This is my Christmas message, and I want to be unusual. You know me. I want to deal with it from an unusual angle. Right. Um, obviously, uh, Christmas, uh, the very name is simply a Catholic thing. It's a uh, Christ's Mass. <laughs> the Mass that uh, was set up, I don't know when that name first originated, but it was obviously a Catholic thing as a celebration of the birth of Jesus. And um, I think most of us are very happy to continue with it in that way as we celebrate um the, the death of Jesus and the resurrection at Easter um, and this Christmas, they don't have to be chronologically accurate. They aren't. <laughs> but our late Queen, we celebrated her birthday, I think, in June, whereas in actual fact she was born in April. So <laughs> let's not waste time arguing over the exact chronology. The main thing is the Queen was born Jesus was born. He is a person who actually lived here, um, that he died, he rose from the grave. But first of all, he had to be born. Come on. <laughs> I have to laugh a bit about this because even I, age 90, was born, although it was in 1932. Anyway, so I, I think to introduce what I want to talk about, and I, I want to talk about an unusual aspect is to go back to the Old Testament scripture, and you're all familiar with Isaiah chapter 9. Um, the, verse 2, uh, the people walked in darkness, have seen a great light. Um, but verse 6, it comes, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. To me, I find this little bit unusual in the sense that the prophet Isaiah, and remember Isaiah was one of the greatest prophets, Isaiah is saying, to us a child is born, to us a son is given. But he was son of God. So really the whole of the New Testament is based on prophecy in the Old. <laughs> it's difficult to fully understand the New Testament. Yes, you can understand the New Testament, but basically it's all based on the prophecies of the Old, and the New Testament was to be the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. But I came across, and somehow uh, when I was studying for this message, I came across which a verse which it's a little bit unusual, but it does refer to this because it's in Second Chronicles chapter 6. Now, I have preached many times on this, 
this part of Second Chronicle 6 because it's to do with the dedication of the temple. But um, Solomon raises a question in Second Chronicles chapter 6 and uh, in verse 17, but particularly verse 18, verse 17. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let your word be verified. In other words, prove true, <laughs> to verify something as you prove its truth, which you have spoken unto your servant David. And then in verse 18, Solomon is saying something very profound. He says, will God in very deed dwell with men on earth? Now, it's possible that I may have to refer to this in later messages because I think it raises a very interesting point because Solomon is actually asking a question, but yet his question is a prophetic statement. He says, will God... In actual fact, I mean, however you translate this, whichever translation I'm using, the authorized version, will God in very fact dwell with men on earth? That's living here. And then he qualifies it by saying, behold, heaven and the heavens of uh, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this house which I have built. So that is quite clear. First of all, that God would dwell on earth, hence in um, Isaiah 6, verse 9, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the very fact that Jesus was the Son of God and dwelt on the earth with us for 33 years. So, Yes, God can and did dwell on earth. It's very interesting. And um, it, it, obviously it's in the person of his son Jesus. But as far as Israel was concerned, and David and Solomon, the temple that they were building and I'm always intrigued with the temple, uh, particularly because my name is David. I, I, I have <laughs> some very interesting personal reflections on the connection with the temple. But the temple was to be the place where the only evidence of God, which was, of course, the Ark of the Covenant, and the Ark of the Covenant, which was to be in the Holy of Holies, was to be in fact, the, well, within the Holy of Holies and in the Ark dwelt the Shekinah, which is God's glory. So although you didn't have the person of God, you actually had the glory of God, the Shekinah glory. That's quite interesting. And when you realize that Solomon and David are saying, can God dwell on earth? Shall God dwell on earth? And how, how can such a building contain him? Because of his glory and of who he is, it is true that the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant in the holy place was only a small representation, the Shekinah glory of God, never could fully represent God himself. And that's why ultimately God had to send his son as being the only way that he could reveal himself to the people. Thank you for supporting our ministry through prayer and finance. We continue to provide humanitarian and spiritual aid to Ukraine, helping the desperate and hurting people as they struggle to survive this winter. David continues to evangelize in person and online. Recently in Georgia, we saw many come to Christ. None of this would be possible without your continued support. To make a donation to support David's ministry, visit 
eurovision.org.uk. Let us leave you with a blessing for the new year. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light, that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness, and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light, and safer than a known way. Thank you for listening to The Power of Faith Broadcast with David Hathaway. We would love to hear from you. Contact us by visiting eurovision.org.uk. Also available online are many free teaching resources to help you on your walk with God. David has written many faith-building books to encourage and inspire. Order these online today. Each month, David ministers online and in person. Our ministry is only possible because of the faithful support of so many people. For details on our evangelism and humanitarian relief work, visit eurovision.org.uk. Thank you again for listening.